Hey, how are you guys? Jamie Milne here from the Pure Jamie Milne podcast, Jamie Milne TV. I'm super pumped today to be sharing this little space with Brad and Lacey War. That's all. That's all. <laughs> we've just talked about 15 minutes about how we pronounce his surname. Sounds like Steve War, you know, you guys know Steve War, same thing. Um, a little bit of an introduction about Brad. I just I've I've known a lot about Brad and Lacey and what they they do here on the Sunshine Coast, which is incredible what you guys do. Um, but I only got the pleasure of meeting Brad the other day. Um, I must admit, I had a uh, a shoe gasm when I came into your store. It's like oh oh oh, oh geez. all the types of shoes you could possibly imagine. So they've got the running company. Um, the running company, if I'm correct, was open. 2009 Bondi, yep. is it Chris Chapman? Chris Chapman's his in name. Bondi? Yeah, in down, down Bondi. Guys like that. That's all I got. No. <laughs> um, and is it uh, is it true you're, you're, you're uh, an established triathlete, uh, Ironman, Kona, yeah, Hawaii? That's my background is racing yeah. triathlons for 14 years or so. Four years there as a professional. Um, God damn. So yeah, that was my story before I started the store just over two years ago. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, wow. So, professional. So the real deal. Yeah. Well, professional is a loose term. <laughs> you, you really, Lacey, are we professional? Can we be professional? Uh, oh, there wasn't much money. So. Yeah. <laughs> you're in yeah, that category. Yeah. Yeah. Start a business. <laughs> that's it. It's like, that's not paying bills or anything yeah. like that. It's, but yeah, it's a passion of mine. I really loved racing and loved the training aspect of it as oh, well. What a grueling sport, man. Like that's proper next level. Like, yeah. I've never done a triathlon, but I have maximum respect for people that do yeah. and, and take on the Ironman and Kona of all. Yeah, it's a big beast. That's the, um, it's a lot of hours. You need a lot of sacrifice from family, um, friends to support you. Yeah. Um, which is now yeah. why you've got the running company. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not doing the triathlon. And I saw you because you did uh, you did an Ironman down in Victoria. Is that right? did, did you do an Ironman down there? I uh, raced a lot of halves down oh, okay. in Vic. Um, sort of Ironman stuff is more I've done a couple of New Zealand and Cairns. Yeah. Uh, from there and then, yeah, across a bit of Asia Yeah, where it gets pretty hot. Yeah, um, yeah. That Cairns yeah. one is gaining popularity yeah. like it's crazy it's really going crazy and it just, it's, it's a great beautiful spot. course yeah and yeah got Daintree on your left great for a roof on your right yeah where else would you want to be yeah, suffering it sucks to be here <laughs> yeah. oh that's quite beautiful out there <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh wow well, man oh that's so cool and my understanding of the running company uh, and please obviously correct me yep. if I'm wrong is so I think of so I, I was always a uh, great fan of Rebel Australia. They yep. they sponsored me for a couple of years. The little charity runs that I was doing, they got right in behind me. So yep. I was always like, yeah, love it, love it, love it. Um, so yeah, really appreciate what they do. And athletes for things like that, great. You know, they provide shoes, etc. Yep. I was instantly impressed and blown away when I came into your store, and and it was like the mix, McDonald's version of Do You Want Fries with that. The the added value was awesome. You know you. You you chatted to me. I got to test run the shoes, not only outside, but also you you know the you've got the treadmills in there for the digital uh, gait analysis. Yep. So having a look at what the, the the lower limbs are doing, the hips and easy ankles, the feet. Exactly. Um, yeah. And you're to- obviously totally switched on about what's happening, and that that really impressed me. Like that was next level. Yeah. So like oh, you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. And that, and no, I, I now and. I, Australia. Yeah, I don't think I would probably go back. I know that sounds really bad. It's not a. I wouldn't go back for shoes anyway. I would. I would yep. certainly. Um, so that that totally impressed me. So just on that note, like if you haven't had a look at the running company here on the sunny coast, and I know they're, they're are they in Adelaide and stuff as well. Yeah. So there's ten stores Australia wide. Where most are in Vic. We got a couple in SA, down in Launceston, and yep. in Sydney in the Shire as yep. well. Um, but for us, it's all about giving that level of customer service and using our expertise, spending the time is the big thing. Yeah. Like not rushing anyone and going as much time as we need to help someone get the right pair of shoes for them so yeah. that they can enjoy running and keep moving. And yeah. essentially, we just want to keep them moving and not get injuries and yeah. doing everything we can to get them on the right path. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, it's like building, when someone walks in the door, it's not just, it's, oh, what colour do you like? Or what someone told you is a good shoe. It's like... Angry salmon. (laughs) (laughs) Coral. Yeah. It's like, let's get a, let's first start a conversation and let's talk about what running you've been doing. What's your history been? Like injuries, what are you training for? What are your goals? What are your objectives? Yeah. And building a little, basically, a profile in my mind or our staff's mind, and yeah. basically, to get this little picture of what's happening. Yeah. And then we use treadmills to help see what's going on as well. And yeah. For us, it's about trying as many different shoes as it is, as many brands as it is, yeah. to go, what's the right one for each person? Yeah. Because all the brands, they, they make some awesome shoes. All brands, they make some pretty average ones as well. And yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's because not run one right one for each person. Yeah, like one, not one shoe is going to be right for everyone. It's yeah, and then, find that shoe that works. And I reckon that reputation definitely precedes you because that, like that, that, so that's the feedback that I get from people that they they don't feel like they've been one pressured into a sale, so yeah. they're not getting sprayed with or led and position seated whatever word you want to use towards a particular yeah. brand i've got this fantastic pair of you know you'll love these and yeah like, oh, but i don't love those yeah, they're not yeah. really my thing yeah. um that's cool man yeah and that's a real a real difference that i noticed i could tell as soon as i came in which is you know well, yeah. now, now i seem to come in now once a week which is <laughs> yeah. just hanging out in the corner like hey brad it's just me again um so what so why, like when people ask me, you know, why a gym, why why strength and conditioning, why things like that. So why why the running company for you guys as a couple, and 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 why the sunny coast? I mean, that's a little curly question, but <laughs> yeah. is, there, is there a is well, there a driving sunny coast for me? It's like years of me badgering Lacey, going, we need to move here because small stories originally from Adelaide, um, growing up through there bloody cold in winter yeah uh-huh. <laughs> and so every winter like being a triathlete and racing around australia i've come to the sunny coast and do training blocks here mm. and oh wow. I, really, I love the coast love the area it's why wouldn't you want to live here totally and so it was it was us sitting on the couch in winters <laughs> me looking at the weather report going what are we doing in adelaide like how do we get there and I, I probably made the mistake of saying, if you find us a job, we can move. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to have to create so, one. So that's We're going to create one, one man. We're yeah. going to create one. And I, I worked in our Adelaide store down there with Chris Chapman, who started up the original one in Bondi. Yeah. He taught me everything I knew for the four years I was there. Yeah. Um, learning the processes and learning that customer experience, mm. to, what to give. And it became a real passion of mine of, what's a way that we can really help people and give back, not only help them fit shoes, but share the knowledge I've got as well in terms yeah. of my racing background. And yeah. I guess the injuries I've had as well and how yeah. I've coped with helping avoid them and like shifting load and all those sorts of things. Yeah. And, and people, yeah. Would, people would totally respect that too because you're sort of, for want of a better term, You've done, well, done more than time in the trenches and earned your scabs like to, yeah. to compete in some of the races and at the level that you have gives you a really good depth and understanding of what goes on, I suppose, with the human body and the wear and tear and all those yeah, types absolutely. of things. And yeah, I mean, do you, you, do you take part in any... Uh, any triathlons <laughs> running or anything like that uh, you're going to hit me with a professional thing <laughs> no, I'm actually a professional <laughs> marathon run no. anyway, um, I guess Jim inspired me to do a few triathlons this Olympic um, but probably marathons really in the last yeah over the last years. couple yeah. of years Lacey's gotten into her running more and more and yeah. over the last year she's knocked off two marathons so oh unreal yeah. done really well yeah. oh that's so cool yeah, it's infectious, eh, the it old running bit, thing. Yeah. You speak to some of the weightlifters in here and they won't agree with me, but <laughs> for, most, for most people it's pretty addictive. I think, yeah, once you do one, it's just like, hmm, what's next? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's funny. I think you yeah. either finish them and you're kind of like, oh, that was fucking filthy, never, never again. again. Or like you, you just finish it, you're like, oh, that is so unreal. And then that weekend, you're scroll- Where can I go scrolling, yeah. scrolling which race is coming up next. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think leading into my first marathon, I was like, it's going to go two ways, either... I'm never doing that again. I hate you, Brad, or the next one. <laughs> yeah. the um, You doing any of the Black Hawk? No. 
No, uh, oh, trail, I'm going to be honest, is probably not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little bit scared on some of the downhills of wild yeah. life. Wild life, wild life, wild life. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally agree. Uh, you get me out once a month for trail run club, and that's probably as far as you get me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like us the other night, we went for a little, just little trot out the back here. There's a, there's a little trail. It's actually yeah. quite nice. There's no hills or nothing, but it's good just to stretch the legs. Like in one run... There was like two massive red belly black snakes, yeah. like positioned, you know, generously apart from each other. And you know how people say like, and it's like the first thing I heard when I came to Australia, don't worry about the wildlife. As soon as you make a ton, <laughs> a ton of noise, they'll fuck off. And it's like, okay, cool. And when you're going through the bush, you know, just stomp and break branches and kick rocks and make heaps of noise because it'll go away. Mate. Mm. I have not seen a snake run away yet. They would have to be the most <laughs> yeah. arrogant fucking bit of wildlife I've ever met. This red belly just kind of like stuck his head up and was like, right, oh, pal, latest. <laughs> and I like, didn't even make And then I like, come around the other corner and there's a massive one just oh, sunning crikey. itself. No worries. Another 500 metres, a monitor lizard that looked like a fucking oh. crocodile. It was huge. Like, You're not helping my cause, mate. <laughs> sorry, man. Not oh, oh sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Stay on the road. Yeah. <laughs> it's much better. Down the Esplanade. Down the yeah, bridge. people are like, why? And then I hear all these stories and I'm like, that's there, why. There you go. I rest my case. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Yeah. All right, man. So, and you're you're doing the 50? Yeah, yeah cool. doing, doing the 50 this off. year. So, yeah, it'll be my first ultra run, I guess. Yeah. Ironman stuff, you're out there for the time-wise, or if not longer. Yeah. yeah, for me, it's getting my head around the climbing that's involved in something like the Black Hole 50. And yeah. Yeah, just the time on the legs. The bluff. Is, um, um, yeah. Really, really that's beautiful, man. Yeah. yeah that's such it. a great spot, bro. Yeah. You've been up there? Yeah, yeah, I have. The scenery's amazing. Like, yeah. You can't talk highly enough of the, not only yeah. the organisation of the race, but then what you can go out and see as yeah, well. Yeah, they've done an incredible job. I don't yeah. know if you ever got a chance to have a little yeah, chat to Megan. Megan. Yeah. They are just a beautiful couple. Yeah, exactly. And, um, the efforts and really that, passionate. And yeah, the efforts yeah. that they've put into that event, um, it's a it's a no wonder what, it's a no brainer why exactly. it's growing in popularity. And yeah. it's awesome that you guys play a huge role in it as well. And yeah, it's going to be a great race. That bluff, though, man, up yep. going. If, if you haven't been up around there, uh, is it Gorilla? Loop? Yeah, Gorilla Loop. loop. Yeah. Gorilla Loop. You should do it. Uh, it has a series of switchbacks that just fucking never end. <laughs> <laughs> but the view at the top's worth it. Yeah, every like every time, bar once, I've been up there. So I've maybe been up there, oh, maybe four, maybe half a dozen times over the five Much years. Of it. Actually, no, one <laughs> little <laughs> one little snake once. Fuck, you just go around the corner here in Premier City and you've got Australia Zoo hanging around waiting for you to come around the corner. Um, no, just one little one, one little brown snake or a little while. It's sounding like I know what I'm talking about. Just one little brown thing. I don't know what it was, but it was a little. Um, but the, the wind um, would sort of swirl and it's done it every time and it's almost like a, um, without sounding like I've been smoking the tea leaves, it's almost like a, a real spiritual sort of experience. Yeah. It's, it's weird. You get up there and it's just this little, it's like, oh, my God. And you just look across the hinterland there. It's yeah, just cool. a magic spot. We're so spoiled. Yeah. My God. We are for sure. Yeah. What's your yeah. favourite type of shoe? What's your, or what, or probably oh. should word that better. What, what do you prefer to run in currently on the road? Well, on the road, like, I like any, enthusiast runner I guess there's a, a few on the cards I, every time I bring another one home Lacey turns to me and goes do we really need this one and it's just yeah needs you've got it needs you need wants. your selection yeah uh, just to like I'd call it uh, product testing I think you've started to sneak them down. <laughs> I know what you mean about product testing that's quite nice you got to make sure you've uh, given everything a good go yeah yeah just to make yes. sure yeah yeah um but yeah like similar i'm not brand bias i've got a few nikes on the go at the moment which yeah. are working well for me um mm. doing coming from like a big road background yeah for me there's a nike race shoe at the moment called the zoom vapor fly next percent um it's got to, got a, yeah, yeah was, it's a tongue twister <laughs> like flashing lights are in it like it's a, so like, i got developed um as a marathon shoe um okay. one of that Nike's key athletes, Elliot Kipchoge, is yeah. he's oh, having another mate. crack in a couple of weeks to break two, two hours. hours for the so, 
Yeah, that's where the shoes originate. Yeah, when yeah. They kicked off. That was incredible, bro. If you ever want to watch a doco, um, like it's on YouTube, National Geographic, just look up um, Nike Sub Two Hour Project. And yeah. Yeah, that was that's incredible. A cool doctor I watch. Did you um, see the the, tre- uh, the when they had that treadmill set up and yeah, people could jump on and try and hold his face? <laughs> that's like people are like, whoosh, yeah, the man. It's like, that's it. Like to hold the yeah, under twenty one k an hour for two hours. Yeah, it's just mind blowing sort oh, of stuff. I could do it for about two and a half seconds, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, or take. Oh. So yeah, Nike have developed this shoe um, with a carbon plate in the middle of it with this foam that just feels incredible. Yeah, what's the what's the thought process behind the carbon plate? That sounds serious. That's more so to keep the integrity, I think, of the shoe like yep. strong and give you something to spring back off of. Okay. The foam is, is what's giving you the biggest sort of rebound from that sort of energy return yep. of the shoe. But yeah, I think the carbon plate just gives you something for the foam to then yep. bounce off of. Okay. Like say there's other shoes out there with a lot of foam, like a Hoka, for example, which are really thick. Yeah. But some of those shoes, you sort of just can sink into it yeah. and almost... Would you create a... Like, say, if you had a bad pattern, which you'd obviously see all the time with your mm-hmm. analysis and stuff, a bad pattern would with the, the big gnarly soles, would you kind of ingrain that bad pattern into the shoe? Does that happen? Yeah, potentially. If you're... Like, any shoe, really, if you're going to mm-hmm. sort of push through it and just that's what you do every single time, that phone's going to compress. Yeah. And in that direction, so Use its yeah, structure, integrity, and yeah, all that sort that of stuff. Um, so that's where, for us in store, we're going to use the iPads, and if we can get something that's going to sort of hold up straight, yeah, and then get it to wear nice and evenly as well, yeah, and not get worse over the life of the shoe. Yeah, okay, um, that makes total sense. Yeah, um, what's your? I, I know, uh, I know. For me, I'm a, I'm a, a fan of strength training and weight training. Yeah. Um, Obviously, uh, I have worked with professional, oh, actually, a professional triathlete and yep. a couple of professional ultra runners. I love the strength training, I love the weight training, but I always get interested in what other runners and obviously the top top level yep. athletes like yourself. What's your thoughts? I think it's overlooked by a lot of people that yep. they just go a pair of shoes and go and run every single day, whereas yep. getting that strength component into a running program can help. Yeah, definitely avoid injuries, I believe. Yeah. So just gets everything firing correctly. And oh, right. Yeah, and just gives you... Yeah, I've been no, saying it for years oh, now. Oh, no. All right, all right. Oh, that's good, good, good. And that's, I think that's where, yeah, a lot of people come unstuck is that yeah. they just the run more, more and more and more and they're just, yeah, they're not, like, the body just goes through a pattern that they're not strong enough. And essentially, yeah. I guess, like an injury is going to come from an overloading issue um, yeah. and your body's not ability to cope with that load so yeah. if you can get it strong enough to withstand the load that's what's going to keep you yeah that makes total sense. sense yeah i yeah. matchy matchy totally yeah, agree that's man good, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah that's that's um and in terms of so talking a little bit more about running the what would you so for a couple of things so maybe start with chafing what would you would, yeah. <laughs> good old Vaseline <laughs> nasty what, 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 what would you what what uh, what is your favorite favored product for chafing what would you recommend so we've got the black all on guys out there yeah, yeah I use a product called body glide okay it's like a tube stick that you sort of wind up like a deodorant roll on yeah and that's my go to put it anywhere yeah Just literally no sharing. Literally <laughs> anywhere. So Would you like to? Yeah, yeah. No, don't share the uh, anti chafe farm with someone else because who knows where that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. But especially if you like areas, say for black or where your pack might rub. So yeah. go on the side of your neck, sort of in through your collarbones, and yeah. then anywhere on a, like a piece of clothing that might have a seam on it. So for me, it's around like a short seam. Yeah. Make sure you go around your waist and sort of, yeah, you can say your thighs and all yeah. that sort of stuff. I guess for the ladies, the bra. Yeah. Have, yeah, the bra strap. And yeah, it's a common You don't one, think yeah. about it and then you get, you know, into your long run and you're like, oh. Yeah. yeah and you a, might not necessarily feel it during the run, but you definitely feel it in the oh, shower. Oh, yeah. shower, man. Oh. 
you put the wild <laughs> orange and lavender <laughs> fucking body wash on and it's just straight into you. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> no, fuck it. And it's even the one on the back. You know yeah. when you do that? That was so gnarly, that race. And you turn your back and the shot. Oh, and everyone's like, what just the get you fuck every time. Doing? Every time. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I, I get it in weird spots other than the, the, the obvious, like the odd ones on the thighs, every now and then. Usually when I do a real dick move, like wear old shorts, don't think about it. You know, yep. just, just vacant, absent minded. But like, even like you were saying, like on the waist, just that constant bit from the waist strap that just runs yeah. a little bit, it just takes the skin off. It's like, yeah. oh my. Well, yeah, as I like, say, on an hour run, that's not going to do anything to you. But for yeah. black hole, that little tiny, <laughs> yeah. when you're out there for hours and hours and hours. Just nice and done. subtle, just sort of slowly <laughs> chipping away at your soul. <laughs> but the, it. Um, yeah, it doesn't take big chunks, just yeah. chips away. Yeah. The, and um, then, I guess, in terms of on that sort of chafing subject, like wearing clothing that's not cotton, that is like moisture wicking and breathable and it's yeah. not going to go coarse as well yeah yeah because yeah, once it gets wet dries yeah sort of that almost it. solidifies you know, yeah exactly. salty shit on it yeah it's all bad yeah what do you um i oh, know this is a very big question we could literally spend an hour talking about just this one topic yeah however i feel it would be an injustice if i don't ask <laughs> what what's your thoughts on fueling so just right like very broad so if yeah. somebody walked in they said brad man i'm doing the 50 um, I'm fucking lunatic. Don't know what to eat. Don't know what to drink. Yeah. What what, what, what would be your go to, mate? Like, it's safe for just the man and lady on the street. Yeah. Well, an established athlete. Just first like, thing, I hope they're not coming in the days before, like a couple of days before the race, yeah. and asking that question. If they're coming in three weeks or more, I I love that because I'm like, let's try a few different things and work out what works for you. Yeah. Not one type of gel or powder or nutrition is going to work for everyone much like shoes and all that yeah yeah and it's trialing different things and getting one does it work does that sitting well in my gut cool yeah. let's stick with that if yeah. that's not working well don't persist with it let's try a different brand yeah um because yeah they're all going to have different ingredients yeah different makeups um so for some people it's the texture of a gel that yeah. they just can't handle so yeah. that's why i'd say go to a powder nutrition yeah. and go gotcha. you, you can drink your calories and your carbs and your electrolytes all in one and yeah. you don't have to worry about trying to suck on a chew or a gel yeah. or anything like that yeah. as a general rule of thumb this is what I've worked on in my racing in the past it's one gram of carbohydrate per kilo of body weight per hour Yeah, that's what I've found worked for me So yeah. one gram of carbohydrate per kilo of body weight Around. Yeah, okay. so I weigh 75 kilos. So for yeah. that, if you look on the back of sure. the packet, <laughs> <laughs> depending on the day, dripping, dripping wet. Yeah. He's been called looking healthy at the moment. <laughs> Stitch up. Yeah. So yeah. this is an insult to him. Yeah, you walk straight back. Yeah. Yeah, right. So it's like looking on the back of a packet and going, how many grams of carbs are in this packet? Yeah. And work out then how many gels or how many scoops of nutrition into a bottle do I need to go? Mm. and then consume that in an hour yeah and i like to have all my nutrition separate to like my water my hydration yeah so then i know i've got to consume that for my calories and then depending on how hot or cold the day is i can like change how thirsty i am really mm. yeah and i don't have to say on a hot day i'm gonna like scull this if all of it's in one bottle in half an hour then i'm out yeah um, at least i can have the calories and then top it up with water yeah or on a day that's cold yeah. You don't have to make sure you smash that on your order. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it makes total sense. It is a hard one. I know it's a bit of a curly mm -hmm. question because everybody's so different. Yeah. But I love I, I love the fact that your you know, your immediate answer is so so, so individualized. Mm. You know, it's not a cookie cutter thing and, and exactly. let's try this, let's try this, let's try this. Yep. My first marathon I ever did in my hometown in Rotorua in New Zealand which was a it used to be called the Fletcher Marathon I think it's called the Rotorua Marathon now yep. I was that guy I skidded into the store the day before yep. the supplement Hell. store and I thought <laughs> fuck I'm sure I should be eating something <laughs> I'm not sure yep. walked in and they just seen me coming man I got schooled <laughs> absolutely schooled and this was like 18 years ago it was yeah. like 22 something like that and I walked out 
with a fucking fanny pack that was <laughs> full of every lube and tube and goo and biscuit and fucking bar and potion yeah. that you've ever seen. I was like ready to go to Afghanistan. And stuff. <laughs> I was loaded, man, and it was fucking all bad. Yeah, like, that's in the gut. No, oh, man. Oh, oh. Which leads me to the next question. Well, any? What's your? Because I I cramped re- like. Never, never again have I ever cramped so bad. I just mm. must have overloaded my system with everything, yeah. everything you could possibly have. Um, go to for cramping. Any thoughts on cramping? Advice? <sighs> again, yeah. another another curly one, but just that, like a, a rough overview of somebody said, oh, I'm so susceptible to cramping, Brad. You know, I cramp all the time. Yeah, if yeah. someone's susceptible to cramping, I'd look at sort of loading up magnesium yeah. in the days before and even during the event. You can get magnesium powders out there, mm-hmm. um, put that into your drinks and just load up that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and you find there's some people out there that like they can be lying in bed in the middle of the night and they'll mm-hmm. hamstring or cramp or the calf will cramp. Yeah. That's that person that's susceptible to cramping. And I think they've got to look at a nutritional point of view and go, what can I do to help load up on areas that's going to stop me? Yeah. But then there's other ways that someone will cramp um, like mid race, they're not they never cramp during training. They'll yeah. cramp in a race. Yeah, and I think that comes from more of a muscular or strength based issue. Like yeah. just, like something's not strong enough and working. Yeah, working too hard. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's getting overloaded. Too much fatigue, yeah. They go and they might smack some like salt tablets and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. essentially, I think when one muscle's cramping. That's that muscle just getting sore. It's not because you're low on salt. Mm. Otherwise, everything would be cramping. Yeah. Like your forearms, your oh, both calves, like everything would be going yeah. rather than just one muscle. I'm trying not to yeah. like ask you a question, then jump in and answer it. Yeah. Too. Like I feel, I feel the same. I see yeah. it, and I've been in the ultra marathon world for years, and people start cramping, and you can yeah. just fucking hear old. David up the road there is like, oh yeah, no, no, get some salt tablets in there. Yeah, it's like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? Like, how how do you know? Like, yeah, how would yeah. you? Oh, you low on salt. It's like, how the fuck do you know? You're low yeah, on salt. That's it. Don't give her salt. Oh, like, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And for me, you know, like in a marathon, I know the place I'm going to cramp at some stage is the top of my hamstring, in my glute. Yeah, yeah. And then you go and get see me do like a Nordic, and my hamstrings are weak ass. Yeah. So, no, I know I need to do it. I yeah. probably don't do it as much as I should, but yeah. Yeah, like, Bali, mate. Yeah. I had Nordic curls or something. Nordic, um, yeah. Yeah. Nordic, yeah. It's one of those things like, I'm, yeah, you work out those. And that's where strength gym training comes into as well. Working yeah. Out what's weak in your body. Yeah. That's the thing that's probably going to cramp. Yeah. First in a race. Yeah, yeah. Great call. Oh, I love it, mate. Wealth of knowledge. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So j- just to sort of... Um, well, first of all, thank you guys for coming in. It's been absolutely amazing yeah, and getting to know you a bit better and, and what you do. And like I said, I'm, I'm nothing but impressed. It's, it's just awesome. So, we, like, where what's the best way for people to get hold of you? Um, where, what sort of social media platforms are you on? Yeah, so I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, just the running company, either Dash Sunny Coast on Facebook or underscore yep. Sunny Coast. Um, Check us out on there, or our shop's in Maroochydore, so yep. in uh, 1 Duforth Avenue, Maroochydore. Yeah, that's so. the, like the top of yeah, the organisation. Yeah, yeah, the M1 building. So yep. if you're coming from Cotton Tree, you turn right over the bridge, and it's just the big building on your left-hand side. Yeah. Um, just drop in and come have a chat one day. Like, yeah. Totally yeah, should, team. Yeah. When you watch this podcast, when you're gearing up to get your next pair of shoes, trust me when I tell you, it is a shopping experience. And you can see that, Brad, and Lacey, they're tons of, tons of knowledge, wealth of knowledge and experience. Um, yeah, yeah, drop in, you. have a chat, and get to know these guys. It's awesome, man. Yeah, so many that's... cool products, too. It's been ages. Yeah, been that's it. <laughs> sifting, just like, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Right, thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you for having us on the, on the podcast. Unreal, man. We'll see you at the Black Hole. Yeah, definitely. Thank right. you. You're welcome. I'll cheer you. <laughs> <laughs>